Here is the case of FACO in massification of very dense cataract. What I noticed upon removal of the cortex, posterior capsular folds or wrinkles. What are these folds and what's behind of them? Let's watch this case together. I started with two paracentases, then 2.4 clear corneal incision, injecting intracameral madriatic agent to dilate the pupil, then using the dispersive OBD as we can see, then starting doing the capsular rexes. Actually, I have a very good dilated pupil and look at the capsular rexes. It's around 5.5 millimeter in diameter. After that, empty the antechamber from the viscoelastic slightly, then doing the hydro dissection. Unfortunately, because of the density of the cataract, the posterior wave was not clear. Then trying to rotate the nucleus, which was unfortunately difficult also. I think my hydro dissection was not complete. So I started doing emulsification of this dense cataract using the horizontal chop technique. While chopping this dense cataract, I felt something strange regarding to the capsular stability and also regarding to the zonule. I felt there is general zonular weakness and as we can see, I failed two times, three times in splitting this dense nucleus in two halves. So I decide to inject dispersive inside the anterior chamber then try to rotate the nucleus very slowly and trying to avoid any more stress on the zonule as we can see here is the chopper trying to rotate now i rotate the nucleus it's good now then i inject dispersive then i complete the chopping of this dense cataract here holding the nucleus very smoothly then by the second instrument the chopper here is separated but also the separation is not complete because of the posterior plate and because of the density of this cataract trying to chop this dense cataract into very small fragments then emulsify each fragment alone at the level of the pupil as we can see and also look at the pupil it start to constrict during emulsifying of this dense cataract also one important as we are uh, chopping and emulsifying this dense cataract in the anti chamber it uh, very important and we should inject the dispersive OVD while emulsifying this uh, dense nucleus to protect the back of the cornea as we can see now here is the last and the end of emulsification of this dense nucleus here's the last fragment everything is good but look at the pupil it's narrow now so just aspiration of the cortical and epinuclear fragment by the end of emulsification of this dense cataract then taking the phaco probe out at the chamber while keeping the ac stable as we can see now it's the time for the cortical removal using the bimanual irrigation aspiration actually removing the cortex through a small pupil is not easy as we can see we have to be careful while removing the cortex through a small pupil and i tried to inject the intracameral but unfortunately uh, madriatic agent but unfortunately the pupil as we can see does not respond now look at the posterior capsular folds or wrinkles which are a signs for both uh, zonular weakness or peripheral or equatorial posterior capsular tear i inject intracameral madriatic agent unfortunately the small pupil does not respond i put viscoelastic i'm trying to check if there is any uh, peripheral tear also i couldn't see so now what should i do should i put a CTR in this case or just implanting a 3 base IOL. 
Implanting the capsular tension ring in case if there is peripheral or equatorial posterior capsular tear is not suitable which can make more damage for the capsule so I abort this idea from my mind I put 3 piece IOL haptics in the sulcus and capturing the optic with the capsular rexes after that as we can see removing the viscoelastic anterior and behind the IOL smoothly and as we can see Here's the end of the surgery. You can see the centration of the IOL, then stromal hydration for the main incision and paracentesis. And thank you for watching and supporting.